the most important table that you're going to see this in this particular oh, yeah. deal here. I should have uh, made those white now. Let's uh, kind of make the table a little easier to see for the podcast people. Okay, is the signs of the delta H are really, really critical. What do I mean by the signs? Uh, the positive or negative yeah. sign. So we've got positive here and negative here. And so if delta H is positive, what do we know about that? Uh, it's endothermic. What's that mean, endothermic? I mean, and that means uh, heat is going into the system. So energy in. Yes. Okay, and then if it's negative. Exothermic. Now folks, you probably should know this um, from previous chapters, and this is energy out. out. Yes. Give me an example of an, end or an exothermic process. Um, burning fire. Yeah, yeah, so I, I lit a fire this morning at my house, in a cold morning, and so I, had, I threw some logs in the fire, and so energy is leaving the wood. Yep. And when it leaves the wood, it releases it into my house. So mm -hmm. from the perspective of the wood, it is exothermic. And actually right. from my perspective as the person who is receiving the heat, yes. it's sort of endothermic. Right. So yeah, you got to be careful of what you're defining as your system and what is defined as the surroundings. So an endothermic, an example of an endothermic process, one that you may not think of would be um uh you've been to water. Yeah, I, I, I was thinking of something else, but that would okay. work too. Boiling water, it takes energy in, right? If you've yep. got a energy goes into the water in order to make it go from a liquid to a gas. So yeah, so if you want to boil water, right, you got a cup of water, and you have to add energy, right, to this to cause it to boil. The example I was thinking, you ever been to a uh, one of those uh, caves up here where we live? There's this place called Cave in the Winds. The Cave of the Winds. Cave or of the Winds, Cave yes. of the Winds. And if you see up there, they've got all these huge stalactites and stalagmites. I can't yep. remember which is which. Well, the tight ones hang tight to the ceiling. And oh, the so this is the might tight the Yes. Okay, so the stalactite, what's happening is, is, of course, it gets very cool in those caves. And it gets as it gets cool, endothermically, it produces these amazing things um, at Carlsbad Caverns. Or maybe uh, those people on Internet land have caves nearby them that they could kind of see. And that's also an endothermic process. Now, delta S is the signs also matter. And I think we've already alluded to this, but we, yep. it's good to put it in a table. If delta S is... Oh, there's our bell. Yeah, well, there's a bell. We're in a school. So, yeah. <laughs> delta S is positive. It's going to become more... More disordered. So it makes sense, yes. right? And then if it's negative, it's more ordered. Or less disordered, whichever way you want to think of it. I'll say equals less disordered. Kind of a double negative there, but if you're thinking in terms of us being disorder, yeah. then it is less disordered. And actually, the example of the stalactite thing that I just gave you just a minute ago, um, it came as a solution. It was yeah. one drop of a liquid at a time. Yep. As it came down, it produced, so it did get more ordered. So this actually would have a what sign for entropy? That would be a negative delta S. It's a negative value of delta S because it's getting more ordered. Right. Now, earlier we talked about things like to be more disordered, but things can become more, di more dis... Sorry. They can become less disordered if... You have lower energy. Right, if the delta H term kind of overrides the delta S term. You'll see and we'll this. talk about that when we get back to that equation. Yeah, and then delta G, this is very yeah. important to understand. If it, it is positive, positive work is, is done on the system. So we would say it is not, not spontaneous. spontaneous. Right. Which means it will not happen by itself. Right. And, of course, then the opposite of that, if it's negative, it is spontaneous. Spontaneous. Happens by itself. Energy is going out. So dissolving sugar. Is that going to have a negative value of delta G or a positive? Well, that was a spontaneous process. I put it in and it happened, so that is going to be negative delta G. So, folks, if you see something that just happens by itself, delta G is always going to be negative. And that's it. it you don't have to, like, overthink that. Nope. It, oh, I saw it happen. Okay, delta G is negative. You see a chemical reaction take place, and you see a precipitate form in, the, in a chemical reaction. On its own. It happened. Without any outside intervention delta G of energy. Is negative. Yes. Okay, it's it's simple as that, you know. Uh, another sort of interesting that's a little bit different that is related to temperature that we could think about is um, a water uh, freezing and boiling. So if I take water solid and I go to water uh, liquid, okay, outside right now I, I would guess it's 20 degrees Fahrenheit outside, probably negative six degrees Celsius. Are you? you know, uh, what's happening to that water spontaneously? 
Uh, it's going to go from a liquid form to a solid form. So actually, it's spontaneous in this direction, isn't right. it? Right, at that temperature. At, at the temperature that it is outside. Right. However, I took some of that ice and that snow that's outside and uh -huh. brought it into this room where it's, you know, probably 70th. 20 degrees yeah. Celsius or 70 degrees Fahrenheit. The process is spontaneous in this direction. Right. So it's dependent upon the temperature whether this Correct. is going to happen. And so that goes back to the equation, delta G equals delta H yeah. minus T delta S. So depending on the temperature, that affects whether it's going to happen yep. or whether it's not going to happen. Make sense, guys? Yes, it makes sense. Did you okay. like that accent that time? It was very good, very good. You okay. still have some work to do, I think. I see. All right. Now, <laughs> one thing we didn't talk about on that table, that there's mm. a sort of oh, a special yeah. spot for delta G. It can sometimes be equal to zero. It could be positive or negative. But what happens is at zero. At zero, the system is at equilibrium. And if you recall, if you've been following along on our podcast, mm -hmm. you understand that we have just finished our unit on equilibrium. Right. But guess what? We're not so done. Because no. you see there's a connection You're between never done with delta G and equilibrium. Yep. Actually, it's delta G equals... We'll actually come back to it. No, no, we have to you write it down do it right here. Delta G equals... Um, RT log K. Oh, I can't remember Negative. the equation off the top of my head. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was trying <laughs> to think. It's, all right, Mr. Sams is going to do that. It's negative RT. I'm almost positive. Negative RT. Ln of K. Natural log of yeah, K. Yeah, I think you're right. That's I'll negative, right? I'll look it up, Justin. We might ought to check I'll that just check. for fun. Why don't you keep going, and I'll double check All the right. equation. All right, we'll All come right. back to that. Okay, so now we want to do um, a sample problem. And um, hold on. Let me... Uh, Um, hold on, guys. Mr. Bergman is jumping, I know, a little bit. No, I don't want to stop. I'm mm -hmm. learning how to use this new program, guys. Sorry yeah. about that. We're not sure where the pause button is on the I'm new trying program. To, or we want to pause I'm it. trying to pause Sorry. the program, and so you should just pass the forward. Delta G equals negative RT ln of K. Am I good or what? You're amazing. I am Two so amazings, good. in fact. So that means if you know delta G... You can mathematically solve for k, right? Vice versa. Yeah. So you know k. Now, by the way, r on this is 8.3145, and that's joules per kelvin mole. Right. So you're not going to use the 0.0821 because nope, this has joules. to do with energy, and that's an important. Note, by the way, this is in joules. By the way, oftentimes delta G is oftentimes given in kilojoules, mm -hmm. and they, you can't use kilojoules and joules in the same equation. You'd have to convert one to the other. Yep. Typically, I convert the kilojoules into the joules to do this particular problem. All right, yeah. let's see if yeah. we can figure out. But this is not one of those problems. So. Um, this particular question. Yeah. Okay. Um, where are we supposed to end at, Mr. Sams? Uh, I think after this one, after oh, okay. the next table. So yeah, what is close. the boiling point of a solution where the heat of vaporization is such and such, and da, 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 delta S is this and right. such? Well, we're going to use our equation, delta, delta G, G equals delta H minus T delta S. Right. Now, when you are at a boiling point, you have the, call it substance X, and it's going from a liquid and it's going to substance X and going to a gas. Now, I put double arrow, though, because, of course, you could um, boil it or you can condense mm -hmm. it. And so when it's at its boiling point, it's at... It's at an equilibrium state. It's at a state of equilibrium. the liquid and the gaseous um, forms are present. So therefore, delta G equals... Zero, because we're at an equilibrium there. So if we say zero is equal to delta H minus T delta S... Yep, and we're solving for the boiling point, which is the temperature. delta T S to both sides... Mm -hmm then we're going to say delta T S is T equal delta to S. Pardon me, T delta S is equal to delta H. So if I say, let me go to the other screen where it's easier to work problems out. All right. Why am I not in a full screen? There we go. I'm good. All right. So if you can say T delta S equals delta H, and if you divide both sides by delta S, then you can say T equals delta H over, over delta, delta S. S. Now, we can just plug these plug in. Plug them in. Now, it's not totally true. Right. Delta H was 23.5 kilojoules per mole. 20? What again? 23.5 kilojoules per mole. And delta S is 34.5 joules over K mole. 34.5? 34.5, yeah and at joules per kelvin mole. But what's the problem here, Mr. Sams? Uh, well, we have kilojoules in delta H and joules in delta S. 
So we have an issue here with the kilo and the joules. Yep. So if I want to convert this to joules, I can just times it by a thousand. All right, so I can say that delta H over delta S will be 23,500 kilojoules per mole divided by 34.5 joules per Kelvin mole. And that's not kilojoules per mole on the top, it's joules per mole now. Oh, thank you. I knew that. I did it right, but I didn't put it correct. Yep. Now, what you get to happen here, ladies and gents, of course, is the joules are going to cancel. Yep. And so will the moles yep. cancel. And since this is actually on the bottom, in terms of Kelvin... It's in the bottom of the bottom. The bottom of the bottom, you will get it on the top, essentially. Yep. So what number do you get when you divide uh, those 681. Terms? 681 Kelvin. And if you wanted to convert that to Celsius, you'd subtract 273. 408. And so you'd 408 degrees Celsius. 